most situations that we know or that we see with um ridiculous killings by unarmed black people there's always a way to for it not to have happened the fact that it was too familiar it was too close and like i said it could have been anybody that i knew and that hit me really really hard and no one ever did anything no one ever looked into it no one ever said anything talk to me a little bit gwen about about when you first started to you know you talked about you know not really understanding a lot of the things that your father and your grandfather were talking to you about but certainly being exposed to that i'm sure was was helpful for you and set the foundation but when did you start to discover your own you know journey um you know to to where you are now to being an activist and to fighting for these this social equity that you know we that that has eluded us for so long um it's crazy because um i would say a little bit before rio so i had moved to mississippi i was training there with my coach at the time and um my actually my ex-boyfriend of mine um he was trying to get back into school you know i was training all that good stuff so we had um he went back into school and he met um our teacher we call him our baba um, his name is Wavoke Sabukwe, and um, he teaches a freedom school in, in, in Oxford, Mississippi. So um, they met through school, and so he invited us to come to the school. So they had sessions every Saturday, sometimes Sunday, different events um, to where it was literally just 100% African culture, um, African education, history, just 100%. So we start going, and... Um, I would say, you know, after Rio, um, you know, as I got immersed more into understanding where I actually came from, you know, because all we know in America is that we were slaves, um, that we're nothing, that we're nobody, and that we're not elite, right? That's all they teach us. And then they get mad at us when, you know, we feel oppressed or suppressed when all we see is our heroes dying, right? We never see our heroes accomplish anything. Um, it's beating to our head. So once I went to my freedom school, I realized that black people were much more than that. You know, you go back to ancient Kemet and you learn all, you know, more about ancient history or ancient, what be, black people did in ancient times. Um, you see that, you know, we were so powerful. We are the supreme. And, you know, the reasons why people want to suppress us is because of our powers, um, our melanin. And, you know, it, it just goes back into that, to that. I won't get deep into that because, you know, a lot of people ain't woke. But, yeah, so <laughs> once I found out that, you know, I wasn't just a slave and I wasn't a nobody, you know, that empowered me. So then we learned about, you know, our our heroes, you know, so many, it's so many, so many heroes that we have, um, our historians, our authors, our teachers, um, and my favorite is really, um, I don't know if people know, but his name is um, Sheikok Antidiak. Um, he was an author, a teacher, a writer. He has a lot of books. Um, you know, he inspired people like Dr. Joy DeGruy, um, Amos Wilson, um, all of those people, um, Nia Simone. So once I learned more about our heroes, our real heroes, you know, that just instilled something in me. And it made me say, okay, so this is really who I am. And so now that I know that, um, am I strong enough to speak out on the issues that I still see affect black people today when, you know, our heroes were speaking about it and nothing has changed yet. So that's where I got it from, just being inspired. I know the, the police shooting of, of Michael Brown had a huge effect on you, um, but, um, you know, he was 18 walking home right uh in your hometown and uh and shot by a white officer what did how did that affect you and, and just talk to me about you know what you remember from that time how that made you feel and, and what you did after that um the mike brown situation um it was heartbreaking only because in that situation in most situations that we know or that we see with um ridiculous killings by unarmed black people, there's always a way to, for it not to have happened. You know, 
And here we are in this world where literally a grown man who is trained to resolve a situation or trained to protect people um, can look at an 18 year old a boy and be intimidated by him enough to where his life does not matter. Um, it was heartbreaking because I have a son and my son does not look his age. He does not look 17. Um, I walked the streets that Michael Brown walked. We went to the same crib trip and it could have been anybody. And it was heartbreaking and it touched me personally, not only because we were from the same hood, but also because my uncle, when I was younger, he used to always say that the police used to harass him and his friends in Ferguson, Florissant, and in Ferguson. So I thought that could have been him or his friends. Um, I remember I was in a meet overseas and it happened. And um, immediately I flew home um, and we protested. We walked the streets and it was so intense. Like the energy, walking, protesting, walking up the street, down the street. It was, it made you want to cry because everyone was so heartbroken and everybody was like, how could this have happened to where it, there was a thousand scenarios to where this kid could have been saved. And yet that officer did not take his life seriously. Um, after that, you know, I feel like I still was quiet. I still didn't find my voice yet. Um, but that really, really was something that stirred up a lot of my, you know, activism for real, just it hitting too close to home. It was too close to home for me. Was that, that, uh, because it was, you know, in your hometown. And as you said, you went to the same quick trip, you know, convenience store that, Michael Brown had gone to and you'd walk those same streets. Did that make it, is that what made it different for you? Because it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't the first time a white cop shot a black kid, you know, a black man, which we've seen so many times, but for you, was it just that, yeah, that, that sort of connection that was, that made it so much different for you? For sure. It was, it was the fact that it was too familiar. It was too close. And like I said, it could have been anybody that I knew. And that hit me really, really hard. Because in any instance, it was it was never in my city, my hood, my, you know, where I lived or where I thrived or where I was, you know, was raised. And then, you know, you reflect and you say, okay, well, my uncle thousands of times, you know, came home and would share stories about how they were harassed by police. And no one ever did anything. No one ever looked into it. No one ever said anything. So it could have been him. 